Brendan here with Sons of Speed with another episode of Corvette Corner. And before we get into how to change the brake pads on a C7 uh, Corvette, specifically the Grand Sport, also will work with the Z06 uh, and even the Z51 and regular Brembo uh, calipers, basically any Brembo caliper, uh, hit the subscribe button, would you? And uh, hit the notification bell so you'll know the next time we upload another video here at Sons of Speed. So for the job of changing the brake pads on the Brembo calipers on a C7 Corvette, you're going to want to get, especially for the front, get both wheels off the ground, use jack stands to support the car, and that way you can turn the wheel, as you'll see it'll be very important in a minute, uh, in order to get at some of the places that you need to access on the caliper. So we're going to go ahead and show you the tools that you need and go ahead and get started on the front, and then we'll head to the back. All right, before you get started, I recommend that you get a, a pair of gloves because obviously there's a lot of brake dust on these uh, calipers and on the rotors and all around the assembly. Uh, you can use rubber gloves or get a set of mechanics gloves, um, but that's where you're going to want to start. Um, tools wise, before we get into anything else, you're going to need a couple of clamps. Uh, I like these DeBalt ones. They've got soft plastic. Um, shoes so that they won't scratch anything. You're going to need a couple of carpenter's punches. Um, this is just a nail punch. This is a carpenter's punch with a grooved or a concave head. And uh, you're going to need a socket wrench uh, with a 13 millimeter socket for the front only. Um, and then you're going to need a hammer. And then we like to coat our hammers in um, painter's tape just to keep it from also chipping any of the paint on your calipers. First thing you're going to do is turn your caliper that way so you can see what's going on. And here you have, there's two pins, one upper, one lower. There is this bridge spring, and then there's this bolt that goes across here. Okay, so to start the disassembly process, take your hammer and your concave punch. And what you're going to do is push this uh, top pin back. And as soon as you get it into the hole there, you can switch over to this one. Now, the reason you don't start off with this one is that it'll slip off of this and, and damage your paint around uh, where the, uh, the pin goes through. So always wait till it gets into that spot. And this is not the only way you can do this. This is just the way I do it. I'm sure somebody else will have a different way and it probably works just as fine. Press on the spring so it loosens up this and then this will just slide right out, right? Now, once that's off, this whole spring will just come right out. Uh, it has an arrow on it right here. It's hard to see. There's a lot of brake dust on there. Uh, telling you that that's supposed to be pointed up. So just lay that down. And now the, the one on the bottom doesn't want to just <laughs> be nice if it just wanted to come out. But then it wouldn't do its job holding that spring on. So we're going to have to tap that one out as well. Once it gets there, though, we'll just pull that out. Okay, and it doesn't matter which of those pins is on the top or the bottom. Next, take your 13 millimeter socket and just break that loose. Okay, once the bolt is out, or the screw is out, I should say, pull the bolt out. You'll notice on the bolt, it's flat on the top and the bottom. That's so it only goes in one way when you put it back. And so you don't lose this. Just thread it back in a couple times. Set that down. Now you're ready to pull the brake pads back from the rotor and into the, and to basically compress the uh, pistons. So uh, grab each of your uh, clamps and position them over the ear of the brake pad and the similar ear on the caliper side. Snug them up at the same time. And then together you just want to Squeeze these until you can't do it anymore. Okay, so that's completely depressed the piston. Uh, from this side, you can push the, this side out, and there's your brake pad. So this is a uh, track pad, ST43 Raybestos. We just uh, came back from the track, so we're going to switch back to a more streetable pad. And we're going to go do some autocross soon. We're going to use the... Uh, the DBA XP735 Plus, which is rated for just track on DBA's you know, marketing materials, but we found it works as an excellent street pad as well. Um, it doesn't squeal, and uh, if you're just going from street to track, street to track, 
Uh, you could do really well. This will also work really well on the track, but uh, especially for autocross, it doesn't really require any any time to uh, to get up to temp. So just make sure that the uh, the rotor and the pad are are even uh, on the back side. Then we're going to repeat the process on the other side. You won't be able to really get around the back of this as well, so just grab an ear, pull that out. And obviously, <laughs> I hope this goes without saying, but you want to make sure that the pad material is touching the rotor. Don't put it in this way. <laughs> if you start hearing really bad squealing sounds, you probably put a brake pad in wrong. So. All right, now it's lined up. Time to put everything back. And we're gonna kind of start in reverse order. Uh, put the uh, the bolt in here first. And again, the flat, uh, flat parts of the bolt go to the top and bottom. It's the only way it'll go all the way across. And we'll thread that on. Now it's very important. What we just did was compressed the pistons into the brake caliper. This means that you're going to have to go in the car before you drive anywhere and reset those by pressing on the brake pedal. When you get in the car and hit the brakes, there's going to be no brakes <laughs> because it's going to be pushing and they're not, there's no contact there. So just don't forget that. Um, once you forget it, you'll never forget it again because you'll be moving the car in the parking lot and you'll have no brakes. You just have to pump them really fast if that happens and you'll bring them back up to, uh, to spec. This you don't have to do too hard. Just, you know, hand tighten with a wrench. Uh, as long as it doesn't go anywhere, it's going to be fine. Okay, spring goes on top of that, and we're going to take one of our pins, thread it on the back right there, and it's going to go on top of that top little lip of the uh, spring, and it's going to go there about, about there hand tightened. And this is where having this all turned is going to come in really handy. So we're going to grab again our carpenter's punch and our hammer. Actually, sorry, you don't need the carpenter's punch, just the hammer. And then we're just going to tap this pin in until that's flush and this is sticking out. And you'll see that the flat part of the pin, you can see it. There's a good, oh, I don't know if that's an eighth of an inch, maybe a little less. It's actually a flat. It's, uh, it's not at an angle. It's sticking out of this part right here. And that's how you'll know it's seated. Um, and you really won't, won't be able to get it in anymore. Uh, for our, the bottom one, again, just start the thread there, push this spring down so that you can get the pin in over it. And that's gonna be, a, you know, it's gonna be some resistance there. That's supposed to be, that's why it's called a spring clip. Now getting it in on the other side can be a little tricky because it's not going to want to line up. So usually what I do is I tap it while I'm pressing on the spring. There you go. And uh, eventually it'll find its way in. Same thing. Hammer it flush. And you're done. That's how you change the front brake caliper. Again, before you go anywhere, you're going to want to Gonna want to firm up the brakes, but that's how you do a front brake caliper change on a Grand Sport or a Z06 with the iron brakes. Now let's head to the back. Okay, the procedure on the rear brakes is much the same, except you can't really turn the rotor around, so you're just gonna hammer out each of the pins. So the yeah, upper and the lower. And uh, you need your longer one for the top pin. Get that one all the way out. Uh, there. You have to kind of feel around for these things. Pull the pin out. There we go. Uh, this one doesn't have an arrow on it because it's the same 
top or bottom, so it doesn't matter. Same thing, pins are exactly the same. And once again, you're gonna grab your clamps and grab the ears. Pull them together. Okay, so ready with the uh, new one. If you have a wear indicator, make sure, uh, it's probably only one per axle, so make sure there's one on the left, one on the right, and you don't put both of the ones with the wear indicators uh, on one side. The other thing is the car will probably have something that will block the wear indicator on one of the sides, so you can't do that. So if you try to put this in on one side and it doesn't work, just try moving it over to the other side and uh, it should fit. So on this one, on the rear is the wear indicator wants to be on the outside. Okay, so uh, you're gonna wanna start the the process with the pins before you put the spring back in just makes it a little easier it is harder to do this on the back because obviously you can't turn anything so you're going to want to thread that through the space in the clip make sure you wrap your hammer good because this is where you can scratch up the back of the caliber not that anyone will ever see that but if you're like me you don't like to damage your car and then just hammer it in you're going to basically do by feel it won't really come out you'll just see the sort of the tip there so it can, it can be a little a little disconcerting but you'll know because it's flush on the back so if you feel for the flushness and you'll see the the tip pop out this one's still got a few little taps to go yep okay Okay, so that's how we do the rear. All right, don't forget to torque your lug nuts down. The C7 requires 100 foot-pounds of torque. You always torque in a star pattern. Okay, as we discussed earlier, this is not your last step. You have to go into the car and pump the brake pedals until the pedal gets firm. Once it's like hard and you can't really push anymore, then you've pushed back the pistons uh, and push the pads against the rotor so that when you go to stop, you're actually gonna have brakes. This has been Brendan with Sons of Speed. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share it with anyone in your uh, car circle who uh, might be changing their own brakes or thinking about doing it and have fun at the track drive safely and we'll see you with the next video here at sons of speed